Hi everyone and welcome to Investing in Canada. In this course our objective is to help you make your investments in the most efficient way. So if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe and activate the notifications if you like videos like this. So our channel is Edufin Wizard on YouTube. So if you don't mind this helps the channel a lot. So if you can subscribe and activate the notification it will be a big help. You can also get access to the complete course on Udemy or Skillshare. The links are in the description. So in this section of the course, we are going to discuss about different investment classes. So we are going to talk about real estate, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, GICs, cryptos, and then insurance products too. So we'll start the session with real estate. So in this video, we are going to cover aspects of real estate. So what I've done is real estate is a big topic. So I have divided the topic into different videos. So the first video we are going to talk about ways of investing in real estate. In the second video, we will be talking about benefits of investing in real estate. In the third video, we'll discuss what are the things that impact real estate prices like interest rates, like economic growth, immigration pattern, net immigration within the country. So we'll discuss all of that things to do when you're buying your first home, like a checklist that you should always follow when you're buying a home, things to consider when you're selling a home and how to access home equity without selling through home equity lines of credit or through reverse mortgages. So we'll discuss all of this regarding real estate. So let's start. So there are three ways, three primary ways of investing in real estate. You can buy a residential property, a physical residential property. So it can be a condo apartment or it can be townhouses. So you can either purchase a townhouse or you can purchase a condo apartment. Okay. Then you can also buy a detached house. So there are three types of property structure in Canada. You can buy apartments where you stay like apartments. You can buy a townhouse, which is a midway between apartment and a detached house. And you can buy a detached house too. Then you can invest in commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is basically office space, a mall, a shop, a commercial shop, something like that, or a warehouse that you can purchase. Right, the mathematics and the financial aspects are very different to real estate, like residential real estate. Then you can also buy using a real estate mutual fund. Not many people are aware, but you can get real estate exposure for very low cost using something called as a REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. So it is a kind of a real estate mutual fund. So we'll talk about that too. So there are residential REITs, residential real estate mutual funds and commercial like real estate investment trust too. Okay. So we'll be covering all of this in this video. So the first part is a condo apartment or a townhouse. So condo apartment or a townhouse, the basic structure is you have owner's area, like you have area where you live. So it could be an apartment complex where you walk in into the door, everything like in that door, like after you walk in belongs to you. So it will be the washer dryer. It could be the fourth floor space, everything. A condo could be it's similar to a house, but generally they're attached houses. So when you walk in, you have the owner's area that belongs to you. And then there are common areas, common areas in case of a condo apartment could be the elevator area. It could be the gym. It could be like the garden, small garden, the condo complex has, etc. So in, in this type of structure where, whether it is condo apartments or townhouses, you have owner's area that belongs to you. Then you have common area that you share with other members or other owners. Then, the exterior and common areas are generally maintained by the condo board. So condo board or the condo association is the entity which governs or which maintains the exteriors and common areas. The interiors are your responsibility as owners. So if anything goes wrong with the interiors, like the shower breaks or something like that, then you are responsible. But if the roof, something happens to the roof or something happens external to to the structure, then it is the responsibility of maintaining by the condo board. 
स्नो रिमूवल लैंडस्केपिंग गार्बेज कलेक्शन इज जनरली कवर्ड बाय द कॉन्डो बोर्ड द कॉन्डो एसोसिएशन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डूइंग ऑल ऑफ दैट सो यू डोंट हैव टू रिमूव द स्नो यू डोंट हैव टू डू लैंडस्केपिंग राइट ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स देन इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट सम कॉन्डो स्ट्रक्चर्स हैव यूटिलिटीज एज अ पार्ट ऑफ कॉन्डो बोर्ड्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सो यूटिलिटीज आर थ्री वेज सो हीट राइट वॉटर and electricity so some condo boards do cover all of these so they cover heat they cover electricity and they cover like water but some condo boards do not right so you have to check the basic structure of your own condo board to find out whether they cover or not now for accessing all of this for maintenance that the condo board does for utilities that it might be covering you have to pay a condo fees so nothing of this is free so snow removal landscaping utilities that might be covered by the condo board that is not for free you pay a condo fee against those services so you pay a monthly condo fee right for those services now in that condo fee if they are saving some bit so if not all the fees are being utilized then the unused fees are stored in the reserve funds so condo boards most of the time have reserve funds where unused fees are being contributed so what are these reserve funds used for reserve funds are used for big maintenances or big like unseen unplanned maintenances so if the roof breaks or if there is a plumbing leak like all of that or like the roof is leaking something like that then the condo board will use the reserve funds to remedy that situation now key point to note if the reserve funds are not enough for maintenance you have a special assessment as a owner special assessment means the condo board will ask you to pay money like example will be a 3000 special assessment for some plumbing leak they do not have the reserves for okay so all the details are given in the condo document so when we are going to cover the process of buying your house we are going to see how to audit those condo documents because understanding reserve funds and like finding out whether they are sufficient or not is very important because if the reserve funds are not sufficient then you are running a chance that you will get special assessment or there are going to be future condo fee increases so that is very important a key point of this structure there are common areas and there are owner areas then the residential real estate side we have a detached house so detached house you own the structure as well as plot of land there are no common areas you own everything you are responsible for maintaining all of the structure you are responsible for maintaining all the utilities you are responsible for snow removal landscaping everything lot of people don't realize snow removal is mandatory by law so if someone falls in your driveway while walking right then you are responsible for that right so it is important to keep on top of it detached homes benefit is they don't have condo fees because you are doing all the maintenance so you do pay utilities gas heat and electricity but apart from that you do not pay a condo fee so you must have a maintenance fund that you contribute to or a way of accessing home equity in cases of emergency repairs if you are owning a house like me i am i am a house owner i do have some rental properties too but i am a house owner so if you are owning a house it's very important to create a maintenance fund or you need to have a way to access home equity in case a major repair comes your way something goes wrong with the roof or something goes wrong with the plumbing all those repairs are very expensive so you need to have insurance in place some part of it is covered by insurance and some part of it you need to put your own money for that you need to have cash in hand okay so that was residential real estate either you can buy apartment townhouses one structure or you can buy detached homes the second way to invest in real estate is commercial real estate you can buy office space commercial units in a mall or in a shopping complex or you can buy warehouses now this topic doesn't 
touch much into commercial real estate because not many retail investors actually put money here these are more institutional side institutional style investors that buy this commercial real estate so we are not going to spend too much time on that but you should be aware that there is a way of investing in commercial real estate too <clears throat> now this is where we want to spend some time because not many people are aware of it right so REITs is real estate investment trust it is like a mutual fund, a real estate mutual fund that trades on a stock exchange. So you can go to TSX, Toronto Stock Exchange, and you can buy REITs. They are same, they trade same similar to stocks. So you can buy it off of a stock exchange. So what are they? They are a real estate mutual fund. So in this structure, a group of investors give money to a professional property management company. So it's like conceptualize we are a group of people who are watching this course so all of us decide to pool our money together and give it to a property management company now this property management company uses that money to invest in residential or commercial real estate so you're handing your money to someone else a professional property management company and they are doing all the work they are going and buying the actual or like apartments or townhouses or commercial properties now in this structure you share the growth right as well as you share the rents so that is a indirect way of getting exposure to real estate now what are the benefits of real estate investment trust so there is a big benefit in professional management so instead of handling day-to-day -day operations like something going wrong with your renters or like rental complaints and all of that you do away with that right so professional management is there your money is handled by a professional who has expertise who has those contractors in place so there is benefit there a key benefit is diversification across geography so most REITs are not focused on a particular city but most real estate investors are focused on a particular city for example i am based out of calgary so much of my real estate is in calgary because it's easier to manage that way but i do not have any exposure to vancouver or toronto markets right so by using a REITs i can get that i can get exposure to a wide geographical space so i'm not exposed to one particular city there is ease of access it is as easy as buying a stock we'll see how to do that when we discuss etfs on how to buy a stock how to buy a etf and how to buy reits then key point again low capital is required to buy units i'm going to share an example after this of a reit so you will see very low capital is required to actually buy like into reits for real estate actual purchase like actually physically buying real estate you need lots of money you need to put a down payment you need to get mortgage in order right so it is very time cumbersome and it requires a lot of capital to go and get real estate exposure but using REITs you're like by small amount of money you can get the same bang you can get the same exposure next there is exposure to real estate price appreciation so if real estate prices go up right you are exposed to that so you benefit from that then whatever rental income the company collects that is shared as shared as dividend so whatever rental income is being generated on the properties that the property management company is investing so that is shared with you as dividend of course after deducting their fees it can this is a key important point real estate you cannot add into your TFSA or RRSPs. So in tax-free savings account, everything is tax-free. So if you add REITs into a TFSA, you get growth that happens in the real estate market. You get rental income and it is completely tax-free. So if you have room in your TFSA, you can also think of adding a REITs into it along with stocks and mutual funds so that you benefit from real estate growth as well as you benefit from right the tax-free structure you can also add it to an rrsp or an resp all registered accounts okay so we'll see one example and then come back so i'll go to an example so canadian apartment property real estate investment trust this is an example so this is a residential reit so what happens 
investors are pooling their money in this in this company they are giving it to this property management company and this company is then going out and buying townhouses and apartments and then they are renting those apartments and they share the dividends or rental income with you so for example you can buy this like REIT for $37 right plus the commissions that are charged on trading stock so you can buy you can invest like less than $100 and get exposure to real estate by using this structure but for physical real estate it's not possible so what happens what do you get when you pay let's say $37 you get exposure to apartments so real estate prices as the real estate prices grow you grow along with them plus you get rental income so if you see rental income of 3% so on this $37 you each year get 3% rental income shared to you as dividends so this is an example of REITs so if you go to their investment presentation so you will understand more so if you go up 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 up, up I'll go all the way up so this is Canadian apartment property lease. So this is the management team. So these are professionals have 30 years, 25 years, 10 years experience in managing properties, right? So like they have given like bunch of data points. This is the key benefit. So they have their 67,000 apartments, right? Across Canada and Netherlands. This is a structure that invest in Canada and Netherlands. By paying small amount of money, you get exposure to all of this. They have in British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec, everywhere. So you diversify their, your holding. So they have given structure to like Calgary, they have 2%, 8%, 46% in GTA. 5% in Nova Scotia, Quebec 4%. So they are quite well diversified. Okay. So that is a benefit. And especially the G, like GTA growing area, like growing population, you get exposure to that. Okay. You can go through this, uh, like this is investor presentation file. You can grow, go through that on your own time. But this is a quick example of a REIT. Okay. So that's it for this class. In the next session, we'll be talking about what are benefits of investing in real estate and then we'll move on for that. So if you like videos like this, please subscribe and activate the notifications so that you are notified each time I upload a video. Our channel is Edufin Wizard on YouTube. You can get access to the complete course on Udemy or Skillshare. The links are in the description. Thank you very much for your time.